The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host over most of TFNN.com. Between 2 and 3 each day we meet and uh, we take a look at the markets. And, uh, I ramble on, I divulge and uh, diverge uh, and uh, digress. And uh, today, of course, uh, we have a big day in that we went out and tested the S&P cash uh, above 2,000 points, psychological, not a technical level. Uh, 2,001.95 is what I have for the high tick. Uh, we're not much off that three points lower at 1,997.84. And it looks to me like we're going to come into a close that will tell us a great deal of what the market has up here. Uh, my call, and it has been since uh, we closed above uh, 1938 on the S&P cash, was that we come up and test 2,000. And uh, as we test 2,000, I suspect we're going to go sideways for a little while, probably into this Friday. It is extremely hard to be short a uh, stock market, at least uh, in these last two weeks of August. And pretty much the last two weeks of December are pretty much a horrible time. That is because uh, most of the people thinking about uh, selling have wandered off. They've gone on vacation. And Christmas, of course, it's off to the Christmas vacation and waiting for the new tax year. Not a whole lot of reasons if you haven't sold by uh, December 15th to sell. And not a lot of reasons when you come into this last two weeks because uh, the chieftains of Wall Street all take off to the Hamptons and impress themselves with their very big houses and their new cars and everything else. And uh, since they're birds of a feather, they all like to hang together. Uh, last week was all about uh, them uh, getting uh, the last weekend before the kids go back to school, uh, probably tomorrow in most areas, uh, from what I'm told, uh, in New York uh, back on Tuesday, at least on most of the schools. So I'll uh, look at that. And, of course, a great deal more of them that already have their kids out of, uh, of uh, school already are already uh, on their extended vacations. Uh, but uh, for the most part, a lot of uh, people are going to be working on stuff, working around the house, and uh, not uh, focusing on the uh, stock market itself. And uh, you know, a few people are going to see the headlines out here today that the Stock market closed to maybe 10 points higher on the S&P at uh, around 2,000 points and uh, made a new all-time high. And uh, probably not a lot of discussions about the very light volume. Um, we already projected that, though, uh, on this show seven or eight days ago, 1.36 billion shares. And if you know, um, we kind of like to see about 2 billion shares at, at a minimum. Uh, coming into the start of the show, and uh, we've got uh, next to nothing for vapor volume out here. But uh, the problem is, if you are short, uh, they're just going to hang this thing up here and uh, let you drift off to the three-day weekend. And uh, it's not uncommon to see a lot of shorts blink over this long three-day weekend. And uh, if your uh, stock's not doing well, uh, probably not going to find a lot of people coming in and buying it. Uh, if your equity, uh, equity or your commodity is in a downturn, probably not going to see a lot of people jump in front of the bus uh, coming into this long weekend either. So, uh, you know, crude a little off, uh, gold is all a little off. Uh, we're probably going to continue to see this kind of movement uh, right into Friday. And if we can't get this for volume today, uh, look for, you know, eh, we're going to get to, what, uh, Tuesday, tomorrow? Unless we get some kind of dramatic news, my guess is uh, we can probably look at this kind of volume until Friday, in which case we're going to have absolute vapor for volume. And uh, you can find out which stocks that uh, the street wants to support and doesn't care 
a rat's patootie about uh, as we look in this. So there is some wisdom to be gained as we look at these higher highs uh, with no volume. Of course, uh, as a technical analyst and someone who has studied volume uh, since uh, and back to at least 1905, uh, with the advent of uh, J uh, James Wyckoff, who's kind of the patron saint of price and volume trading. Um, you know, uh, volumes up here is weak. Uh, normally, you don't get any kind of pullback uh, counter to the market, at least into September. So I wouldn't be uh, diving headlong short uh, until you get either into the Friday close or probably into next week. My thought is that we're probably going to start seeing volume return and some higher prices since uh, September. If volume doesn't really start to picking up, though, um, you could come back and fairly easily move 30 points down in the S&P cash. So uh, eh, a few of the weaker stocks uh, seeing some of these folks bail on already. And uh, we can take a look at uh, some of those. Uh, but uh, I digress. Again, uh, Going to win the digressing award once again uh, for all of the internet. Uh, just a walk away every year, and I forgot to actually get my uh, my uh, history. We'll do that after the next break. Update it for today. In the meantime, we talked about uh, FireEye on uh, Tom's show on Friday afternoon at four, and. Um, I didn't have time to get into it or we hit a break or something. I didn't uh, finish it all up. Uh, but part of what we were talking about, F-E-Y-E, -E, uh, was a great company uh, that has not figured out a way to make money yet. Uh, in fact, they're, I think they're losing $300 million a year or more. Uh, F-E-Y-E -E is a company with great software that tells uh, big companies like Target whether they've been hacked and whether or not people are using uh, some of the things that they have hacked uh, from it. But uh, what uh, we are looking at in this is a problem, and that is if someone tells you you've been hacked, you can get in big trouble for not telling everybody. And that's exactly what happened to the last Target CEO who got canned right after New Year's, uh, mostly because... Um, if you can plead ignorance or, uh, in the case of a, a president, uh, plausible deniability, which is always a big deal for presidents and politicians. Well, I just didn't know. I read about it in the newspaper. How many times have we heard about that? Uh, the idea that you didn't hear about anything, saw no evil or no evil, uh, is the only thing that these guys can hide under, especially going into a Christmas where this Target CEO didn't want to start blabbing about the fact uh, that they'd been severely penetrated. Well, unfortunately, FireEye told them. Somebody at FireEye told one of the leading investigators, um, i trying to remember his name. Uh, what was it? Uh, I'll think of it here in a second. I read his blog just about every day. I'll bring it up here in a second. Uh, but it is one of these things where if you know about it, then you have to act and uh, why FEYE has, uh, FireEye has some great technology. Um, I'm wondering if it isn't more important for most of these companies just to plead ignorance. And maybe that will be the downfall of FireEye is that they have the greatest software that well, no one will buy because the CEOs want to run for cover and don't want to have to come out and uh, they'd like to do it on their own timetable. I think uh, Target would have loved to do it after the first of the year after Christmas is over and not get involved in it. And, of course, uh, it isn't their money, so they don't care. Uh, they are the uh, people that were supposed to be watching um, your software. Let's see if I can find it here. It's I, Yeah, it's Craig. Craig uh, K-R-E-B-S is the guy that broke it. Uh, Brian Craig's. And he's got a nice blog out here on uh, just various things that go on via security. I didn't get into it. Uh, I think I was talking to Tom about it uh, during the break. But uh, they've got credit card skimmers now that are hitting in Europe. I read this on his blog. Uh, that are, are basically as thin as a piece of paper, and they're just shoving them down 
in the uh, credit card slots, and these things are being able to read uh, the magnetic strips on those cards. Um, and uh, if uh, some dodo didn't uh, mess up and uh, hit the machine too hard, uh, kind of tilt it like a, a pinball machine, um, we may not have known about this for weeks or months, but uh, there have been a credit card uh, skimmers becoming uh, quite uh, quite uh, sophisticated. Anyway, I uh, just didn't want to go too far down the road with FireEye. Uh, if uh, people were thinking about buying it, they need to solve the issue of what happens uh, with notifications to these CEOs. So the CEOs want to buy their software and uh, not get ratted out. But uh, part of the problem FireEye has, of course, is that uh, eh, the truth came out. Uh, it was horrendously bad for the existing CEO, so he got canned. So if you're a CEO of another company, can you just say, well, uh, I didn't think that it would integrate well with our software. Uh, it just looked like too much of an expense for this quarterly thing, and we're looking at other options. I mean, these guys can fiddle while Rome burns. Uh, what they can't do is fiddle if FireEye says, hey, you've been hacked. They got all your credit card information. So it is problematic at best to uh, come back and uh, say something. Um, if you didn't see it, and I didn't see a lot of discussion about this uh, today, uh, France is uh, going full commie. Of course, uh, France has gone farther and farther left. And uh, for uh, socialist Western democracies, uh, they are probably the far left uh, of uh, uh, all the countries in Europe and uh, I, I would say they differ themselves from thugocracies uh, like the commies in Russia. Uh, they basically have drunk in the, the Kool-Aid like Jim Jones and uh, believe that uh, through uh, communism, socialism, and I'm not talking about uh, uh, paying somebody a little extra. I'm talking about 30-hour work weeks and uh, retiring at 40 and just a lot of stuff that we know that there's absolutely no uh, way in a spreadsheet that anybody can even lie into them um, being fiscally responsible. Uh, but uh, one of the uh, far-left dudes uh, in the government, uh, Montberg, uh, basically uh, dissed Germany's conservatives uh, for trying to keep their houses in order. Of course, uh, Germany owns just about 80% uh, 80, uh, 80, uh, 80 of everything in Europe. Because uh, they spurned that, of course, uh, building from the ashes in World War II, uh, where uh, France, uh, pretty much the only, only undangered, uh, undestroyed uh, country that left Paris, of course, fairly uh, untouched. Hey, big star story about the uh, German uh, general that wouldn't burn uh, Paris, although he'd been ordered to by Hitler. Uh, but uh, well, we're going to get a little bit more into this. But basically, uh, Holland's uh, towing the far left line and trying to move his government even farther left, even though it hasn't worked. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
we've just launched one of our best Tiger Dollar sales ever. Right now, you can get a 40% bonus on any Tiger Dollar purchase through Sunday, August 24th. That's right, a 40% bonus. If you're a current subscriber, then this might be the easiest 40% you can make all year. And if you're thinking about subscribing, then get your Tiger Dollars now with a 40% bonus. They never expire and can be used for any TFNN product or service. For all the details, visit TFNN.com and lock in your 40% Tiger Dollar bonus today. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Anyway, um, France continues to uh, look like it's uh, rolling into a huge recession. And uh, eh, they're going to go double up, it looks like, uh, at least Holland Day. He is the most unpopular president in more than half a century of uh, their national newspaper polling. And uh, kind of interesting to see that they did go down this road and uh, want to turn back. Um, most people just uh, ride it all the way in uh, until uh, they become Argentina. Um, of course, uh, I uh, am thinking that they're probably socialism, communism, probably the worst form of government ever invented. Uh, but uh, if you want to look at my calls, at least uh, international, they're mostly colored by a great book called The Politically Incorrect Guide to Socialism. It goes through uh, 6,000 years of recorded socialism and shows that it's failed every time. But uh, people always come back and say, we're different, and it's different this time. And it never is. They run out of people's money, and everything blows up. And uh, they all act surprised once again. But uh, don't be surprised. Uh, Argentina is headed down a uh, rat hole, and it doesn't look like uh, France is going to be far behind. Uh, Burger King is uh, talking about having a big merger with Canadian coffee donut chain Tim Hortons, which I was forced to eat at many times. Uh, there's uh, nothing like Tim Hortons up there, especially um, where we had our office in Markham, Ontario. 
but uh, it is uh, everybody just uh, that's kind of their McDonald's. I mean, national uh, pride now everything. Of course, uh, part of this deal is all about uh, uh, becoming a, a tax haven. Um, and uh, Burger King actually flying the flag of Tim Hortons under Canadian corporate law to pay a greatly reduced, uh, about 15% less uh, tax. And uh, it would be very interesting to see uh, that uh, Canada has become a tax haven. It's mostly been the other way around. Of course, uh, Canada has actually kind of woken up to the fact that uh, uh, their big, long uh, experiment in the 1990s uh, went south, and uh, they've learned from it. Unfortunately, uh, we apparently have to continue to uh, have a totally moronic 35% corporate income tax rate. And uh, that means uh, companies like Microsoft uh, have a $100 billion overseas uh, that they can't bring back or face a 35% uh, tax penalty and uh, ain't going to do it. They ain't going to do it. And uh, I think uh, the sooner we wake up to the fact that it is a world market and uh, no matter what you want or the way you feel is going to change the way that uh, business operates and maybe we can uh, come to a decent uh, agreement where uh, we bring our corporate income tax in uh, line with the rest of the world instead of just being ignorant and stupid. Uh, problems with Gandhi. Uh, of course, uh, we talked about Amazon uh, getting ready to put $2 billion into India. Uh, other companies like uh, Google and Uber have been throwing a lot of cash. Uh, new restrictions on online billing in India may affect uh, the international economic, uh, e-commerce business. Uh, it looks like a play by the new uh, government. Uh, and uh, he is like, uh, I guess the new prime minister is kind of like a distant uh, relation to Gandhi or all of them are. It's kind of hard to actually tell. Um, they can talk a lot, a long time about India, and it's still hard to really get your fingers around it. But uh, uh, it looks to me like uh, they're at least uh, going to extract, at minimum, a pound of flesh, and uh, maybe a lot more for these countries uh, trying to come in and uh, take over uh, for multinationals. It looks like it, at least India is starting some protect protectionism over there, and uh, it will be interesting to see how these play out, but uh, it uh, looks like these restrictions are just the beginning of several of them. Um, question in the den is how many companies are actually paying that 35% rate, though? None, because they don't bring the cash back. They borrow it overseas and pay 1%. They'll do that for the next 35 years and still break even. So, uh, maybe uh, uh, the uh, uh, congressmen and senators can... Uh, Pull their uh, what are they cranial rectal inversion? Can I say that? Uh, pull the uh, <clears throat> uh, cranium out of the rectal probe area and uh, figure out that uh, it doesn't matter what they want; it's not going to happen. They can raise taxes here. It's just going to run more and more companies out of it. Uh, it is a world market, and uh, it is the market the Congress created, and now they're going to have to live with. Um, we got some companies that are moving out here. We'll get to them and we'll get into charts in the second half of the uh, setup. But uh, yeah, just going to do like Apple. They're going to borrow a bunch of money and return it to the shareholders who share buybacks. We'll see you in just a minute. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to Educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We're looking at a couple of stocks that are heroes out here today, at least um, on earnings. Uh, OSIS, O-S-I-S, -S, uh, up 1%. Dendron, the pharmaceutical company, up uh, 4%, and probably the reason I'm sitting here. Uh, of course, their drug killed so many people that uh, not a big stock price anymore, but uh, it saved my life, so uh, I like old Dendron. Uh, of course, uh, they had a pretty hefty price on that thing, and uh, I guess uh, anything that can save your life is worth it. Uh, anyway, uh, other uh, issues out here. The Zeros, Pihu 360. Uh, we've talked about this one. They're very weak out here over the last few days, which is kind of surprising. QIHU, of course, the uh, Chinese Internet company off uh, almost 9% today. ESI, ITT Educational, still rolling through all kinds of problems uh, with FBI raids. And uh, no one wants to be them. Uh, exiting stage left down another 4% today. Uh, XXIA off uh, almost 2%. Uh, so we have a few stocks out here moving. It is a mad, 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 mad market. And uh, uh, you can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com if you want to look 
at a particular stock. And, of course, you can post a message in the den like Mike, oh, J&J did. Uh, and uh, I think that's probably John from New Jersey, right? And you want to look at uh, Twitter, TWTR. Take a quick look at it. Uh, this thing's kind of just going off uh, up against the resistance level uh, where this thing spiked at 48 bucks on earnings. If you remember that day, this thing took a huge spike. Uh, and I think if uh, I also remember right, it was 28% or 32% short interest. I just talked about um, being very scared of a bunch of stocks uh, going into earnings that had monstrous short uh, uh, squeeze levels in it. You didn't want to be on the wrong side of this one if it did. And uh, pretty much price for per perfection. I wasn't looking uh, during this er earnings cycles of seeing anything more than 48 bucks. But uh, certainly you were on the wrong side of this trade um, going into earnings. And uh, uh, very light volume coming back up to this little gap down after that earnings day. Uh, but uh, you're basically into that candle. Of course, uh, you know, just about everything you want. The downside is that the story has changed on Twitter to like it had changed on Facebook. That is, they figured out how to at least make some money so they're not bleeding cash anymore. And that makes it very tough to go short against these uh, uh, companies in what looks to be a fairly decent bubble already brewing in technology. Um, and, uh, you know, you wanted about 7 uh, million shares to go up against the April 22 high. You certainly got that with 110 million shares on July 30th. Uh, now, of course, uh, we're down at 19 million and what have we got, 14 million today. Uh, probably looking at this thing in some kind of bigger trading range. Uh, maybe you hit 48. My guess is that you're probably close to 47 uh, to probably about 39 in the trading range in this. Uh, as it continues to figure out, you maybe need one more earnings uh, report that uh, shows that they're at least stable and this thing could uh, go sideways or maybe even up a after a while. Uh, but it is, uh, I don't know what else you can say about it. Uh, the arguments still go back and forth on uh, just how much these people can make in the way of cash. And uh, it looks like Facebook has really figured it out. Um, Twitter is trying to make a, uh, a thing called a native advertising uh, model work for them. In fact, I spent a lot of time listening uh, to some podcasts uh, for the insiders in Silicon Valley talk about it this weekend. And I'm writing about it in the Tech Insider for Friday. Uh, native advertising is basically advertising uh, with content that is sponsored content for you. If uh, we say you go to Amazon, which they do do it, and uh, they know you buy a lot of comic books, uh, you might find content uh, pushed your way on Amazon.com uh, based on uh, things that you like. And they may even be sponsored. It may be content that you see for free. Uh, but uh, kind of like putting the Pepsi ads or the Pepsi cans inside of a movie uh, where they pay to play to have their products and product placement in movies, um, product placement in advertising uh, for free content, let's say something you want to read about, uh, maybe put the, in many places and uh, kind of what I'm writing about now, but uh, actually called native advertising, uh, kind of uh, slipping it in. Uh, without really telling you too much about it. But it's pretty obvious in movies where they hold the Coke can up and uh, maybe they got a half a million dollars to do that. I think uh, one of the uh, bombs this summer was the uh, last retread, hopefully, of the uh, Transformer movies and why I didn't go and see it. I hear it's uh, quite blatant uh, that uh, he runs, uh, Mark Wahlberg runs into a uh, beer uh, company truck and uh, swills down, I don't know which one it was, Budweiser or whatever, uh, during uh, the middle of the show, and the label is turned perfectly, and they got a big wad of cash, probably half a million dollars to do that straight in the center of the movie, and uh, not too differently from uh, what uh, cigarette companies did to uh, uh, push their cigarettes in 60s and 70s television before it was outlawed. Oh, anyway, uh, let's take a look at some of the other stocks moving out here. I uh, wanted to look at some of them. 
Uh, we talked about this on Friday, so I wanted to bring it up again. Uh, but a lot of these stocks pretty much tapping out at these highs and people being at least a little scared. Uh, of course, Avago Technologies uh, is buying another company. I think you could probably say they're going to be a little weaker um, buying LSI Logic, which used to be a, um, a kind of a big deal uh, at least 10 years ago. They got bought out by somebody, and the people that bought out them are selling them uh, again. Uh, and uh, I think it was Avago had LSI selling it. Or no, they're buying it. Uh, but uh, and just let me make sure here. Yeah, Intel acquires uh, Alexia chip business from Avago, uh, which kind of drew them up over the last few days, but not a great deal of volume. Uh, but uh, still one that looked like a pretty good, obvious uh, top in this, and that is Avago hitting its July 22nd high at uh, 2.3 million shares uh, with 1.8 million shares, 1.5, 1.5, 1.1, 1. 1. 1. 1.8 on the uh, 19th. So, uh, again, fairly uh, obvious that uh, this thing didn't have a great deal of juice. And last legs up on a lot of these stocks are light. Let's uh, take a quick look at the S&P cash out here. Uh, still up at 9 points, 1.49 billion shares, so 1.5 billion shares. What I wanted to look at was Apple. Apple looks like it's probably going to bounce around between 100 and uh, 102 bucks, uh, probably for the next few days. That's my guess. Not a lot of energy out here, 29 million shares, but uh, not a lot of push out here. Of course, we were up to uh, 102.17. But my guess is this thing's kind of probably go kind of sideways into that September rollout for the new iPhone uh, 6s, which uh, I guess there's going to be a 6 and a 6L is at least the rumors. The 6L will be the large uh, five and a half inch version. And even the smaller version is going to go to a 4.7 inch screen, at least uh, at least the best information that we have now is that what it is. Anyway, Avago sells to Apple. And uh, not big surprise that this thing's kind of rolling back up here. But uh, maybe one of these sell on the news deals. That's why I'm thinking that uh, if you are wanting to go short, you're probably not going to want to short until Apple has uh, rolled out its big deal. Uh, uh, at least the indexes. Maybe some of the other stocks start falling out here fairly quickly. Wanted to see how uh, Citigroup is doing at, uh, on the um, two, March 21st high, $51.00. Uh, and they had uh, 38 million shares. Wanted to see on Friday, of course, they had 20 million shares. It spiked through that 51 bucks. A little higher, 13.6 uh, million shares today. So it looks like we are going to break through these. And as I said, light volume. Uh, most of the people in the way do not uh, be surprised when a lot of these stocks continue to drift higher by pennies above uh, previous highs with no volume all the way into Friday as shorts get squozen. That's a new word, squozen. Anyway, you can certainly give me a call at 877-927-6648 and uh, email me at pathtfnn.com and post messages in the den if there's anything else that you want me to look at in the meantime. Uh, Canadian Pacific Railways, uh, another one of these uh, stocks up here at highs, just kind of moving sideways, CP. Uh, and, of course, uh, I have a daily newsletter. Hopefully, everybody uh, picked up uh, Tiger Dollars over the weekend. And if you did so, you can get my daily newsletter. Uh, all these charts that I look at, uh, you would get before the market open. Um, and uh, stuff that you should be looking at. Some people have said I have the best scans in the world. 199.65 uh, July 22nd for Canadian Pacific Railways. Uh, 830,000 shares basically got into it, uh, into that candle on the 20th with uh, 522,000 uh, shares, 418,000 shares on the 21st. Last two days, 283, 245. Uh, as I said, uh, not a lot of energy into these highs, uh, but don't expect these things to roll back over. Just look for them to tap out. And uh, if I was long, I'd probably be uh, uh, moving to cash out here. Um, and see if there's any chance that, that when we come back from the long three-day weekend that we see a change or character in the markets. But uh, a lot of times uh, this quiet week opens up a little bit of an air pocket 
uh, as uh, uh, most of the shorts vacant the market. And if you have a stock uh, kind of devastated the first few days of September, uh, it can be problematic in that you've got no shorts to help you cover and the things can uh, take an elevator ride to the downside fairly quickly. Diamond offshore drilling, a lot of these offshore drilling stocks kind of plowing to even a little bit lower, but very light volume. Uh, so I'm going to watch these very closely for maybe a counter trend move. But certainly uh, you wanted either four and a half million uh, from the February 7th low or at least four million shares from the March 16th, 17th low at 43.69. But you wanted somewhere around 43 or 44 for this thing to go through four million shares. And you really don't have it. So uh, some of these stocks look like they are kind of wound up and could have a nice big pop in them. But 600,000 shares today on Friday, you had 1.1 uh, million shares. But uh, coming in on 25% uh, volume, you really have to be watching uh, these, uh, some of these stocks that have come down to nothing in the energy sector for a huge move without the uh, volume down at these levels. Uh, uh, ELY. Some of these other stocks that look like they can be hammering at a bottom. Uh, might be Callaway Golf. I disliked, uh, this thing was kind of setting up. I dislike the fact that it's had uh, two lows, though, out here. Um, the July 31st low with 4.3 million shares, and even this August 21st low, 1.6 million shares. You need this thing to come back and man, pretty much hammer out uh, below $7.48, some very light lows. Of course, that support level was set up on the October 25th uh, absolute takeoff of this stock, uh, ELY, uh, on uh, 9.6 million shares. So you probably got a fairly decent support level in here. All you really want is some very, very light volume. And uh, eh, maybe these uh, Callaway Golf is going to be uh, seasonal going into fall. Maybe uh, I haven't looked at those stocks long enough. When we go to the FAS, uh, excuse me, the FAS, which is the financial bull shares, three time, uh, this thing is a breaking above the previous highs. You wanted to more than two and a half million shares. So on the 21st, two million shares. On the 22nd, you had one point, what's called 1.3 million shares. Today, pretty much ticking with one million shares. So we are breaking through some of these highs. You could even say that uh, we are lacking the kind of volume. On the April 4th, uh, 2014, uh, high on 96.96 um, with 6.2 million shares. And this can all be considered a false breakout uh, on the uh, bull F uh, shares. So you kind of have to watch it. It's starting to get kind of a dangerous market. So you want to keep a, a close eye on it. IMS Healthcare, another one of these stocks. Uh, not a huge volume stock to begin with, but uh, certainly super light volume these days as it tries to drive through the July 24th high, $27.64 with 600,000 shares. So let's go back through the last four days, 256,000 shares, 313,000 shares, 175,000 shares, 75,000 shares as it tries to break through that July 24th high. So keep uh, an eye on IMS out here. And uh, when you see one of these stocks, the next thing you should do is go, okay, is the entire sector doing it? If they do, uh, watch it. Um, we talked to a gentleman on Friday about Intel. Um, I kind of thought that uh, the best was in for Intel. Uh, pulling back on light volume, but uh, probably in some kind of trading range. And we'll get to that when we come back. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. 
Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator. Also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're going to go right to Sam in Irvine, California. How you doing, Sam? Great. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, I have a question about uh, SkyMobi, M-O-B-I. Mm -hmm. Chinese company, I'm usually afraid of going around Chinese companies because I can't look at their fundamentals. Right. I was wondering if you think if this is a good company to trade. The one thing I would want to find out about it, and I tried to look at it during the break, is whether or not this company has uh, uh, a deal with Show Me. What these people do for the rest of our listeners is they run the equivalent of a company uh, like uh, Google Play, the App Store, or the Apple Store uh, for all of China. And, of course, they have the papal blessing of the uh, chai uh, But I can't really tell if they've got a deal with Show Me, but I think Show Me's taking over China and probably going to crowd out Samsung and Apple. And I want to find out a little bit more about that relationship. Do you know anything? No, sir. I've been hearing the same thing, but I was wondering if you knew anything about it. No, I, I, I would want to do that. In fact, uh, let me write a note on it, and I'll try to cover it tomorrow. Thank you very much. Sounds good. Do you have time for another quickie? I got somebody else on the no line problem. I'm going to go to Thank real quick. Thank you very quick. much. I'll call you another day. Thank okay. you very much, sir. Have a good day. Steve, 
You bet. Steve from New York. How are you doing, Steve? Hi, Dave. I have a question about the advanced decline line. Mm -hmm. I recall in around 98 to 99 before the dot-com bubble, it was in a big downtrend for at least a year and a half. Right now, the advanced decline line is following the S&P 500 all mm -hmm. the way up. Yet, we keep making the new high list. I track that each day. I get the data from Investors Daily, and I put it in a spreadsheet, and I keep a 10-day average. Mm -hmm. For the last year and a half, we've been making lower peaks every time the market has gone up. So, consequently, I'm a bear. And mm -hmm. I think you're a bear, too. Okay, but I can't I understand I mean, Go like, ahead. what's going up. What is going up, and is the advanced decline line, does that include all stocks or just the S&P 500? No, the, normally what you're going to see at the end of the day is approximately 2,800 stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, there is a advanced decline line for the NASDAQ, too. And if oh. you email me the, uh, um, if you email me at path at tfnn.com, I'll send you a link at Yahoo that splits out the New York Stock Exchange, the Amex, and the NASDAQ. So you can look at all of those separately. Um, what I normally look at is the summation index, the McClellan summation index, uh, which just pretty much I go on the New York Stock Exchange, um, the NYSE version of it. I don't see that much that's truly telling in the uh, NASDAQ anymore uh, for the summation index. But I do look at it, but I'm pretty much glued to the uh, NYSE. And my guess out here is that uh, if you thought the market was going to break, uh, that at a rotating average, uh, you can read more about it. In fact, I'll send you some links if you want. I would look at the advanced decline line with the filter of the summation index. Um, it's worked extremely well over a period of time. Like I said, you're probably, if you're expecting some kind of big movement out of this uh, move to the high with lighter volume, you're probably looking at the maybe... It, early as the first week of September, maybe the second week, and maybe even after options expiration. Uh, I don't see a lot that anybody says, uh, is doing right now that sets up for a great downside in the market, at least the street players. So to me, if they think anything's going to happen or the bottom's going to drop out or the Fed's going to change their mind, uh, it certainly hasn't started to happen yet. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Have, you looked, at, have you looked at the summation index? Yeah, I have that. Um, I don't really look at it a lot. It, to me, it, to me, it is a better way of looking at the advanced declines than just looking at them every day, because it does take a while for the market to roll over. Okay, thank okay. you. You bet. I'll send you those links uh, if anybody wants them. Path. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, the opening call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.